the environment. It's bad for the environment. Oh, you're 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 killing the planet by eating meat. Let me address that pretty quickly and pretty easily. Number one, if you really think that and you've done any research at all and you still believe that, you're dumb. Like you you there's it's completely untrue and you're trying to push a narrative that uh either one you're making money off of you know going vegan or two you're delusional there's it's only two ways to look about it to 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 go about it because see there's um to make plant-based stuff to to most of it is you know, corn and soybeans all mashed together that that we eat that we're going to put, you know, different juices on and put 20 different ingredients to make it look like beef. That way it's it's healthy for us. Right. OK, I, I was just talking to a, um, a good friend of mine two days ago. He uh, him and his wife moved to uh, South Carolina uh, from from L.A. Um, they moved to South Carolina and they have an RV and they take road trips all over the place. He, he said he took, they took a road trip, um, last summer from South Carolina all the way up to Maine. He said, yeah, it was really, really pretty, but oh my gosh, I didn't realize how many cornfields there were. I didn't realize how many cornfields there were out there. The whole, he goes the whole way. Cornfield after cornfield after cornfield. I'm like, you must not have ever been through Iowa or Nebraska or something because that's all that's there. Okay. What does a cornfield look like? Let's, uh, let me see. How do I do this? What does a cornfield, oh, here we go. What does a cornfield actually look like? This is what a cornfield looks like. Okay. We all, we've all seen them. That right there. Okay. All, all this. Corn for days and days and days. If it's not corn, then it's soybeans, right? Well, you take a look at something like that and you ask yourself, when are you ever going to see that in nature? In nature, When are you ever going to see a monocrop? One, one species planted for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. There's only two places that you see that. The desert where nothing grows and it's just sand. And the... And the Ice caps, the polar ice caps are up in the mountains where it's all snow, it's rock and snow. That's it. It's the only places that you see that. And what lives there? Nothing. Okay. Let's look at a, um, let's look at a cattle ranch real quick. Let me see. How do I, how do I, let me just switch this actually, hang on one second. Let me, let me show you this real quick. Go here. This is this is what cattle look like grazing. Okay, you, you guys see this if you guys go anywhere in, in the cattle country, that's what you're gonna that's what you're gonna see. That looks pretty natural, right? That looks pretty that that that's looks like what you'd see um, hundreds of years ago. How do you know this? Because let's go here. What used to be here before cattle? Bison. Right. This is the this is the native herbivore to U.S. Is there much difference between that look and that look? Anything different? Not much. Not much at all. That's you. You want to see something that's that's natural. You want to see something that that's been been proven for thousands and thousands, if not millions and millions of years, that's the model that you look for. That's, that's, there's, look, you see trees, you see different grasses, you see, you know, you see um, nature's fertilization after they, they, they leave that grass behind. That's something that, that, that is truly sustainable, that is truly, truly regenerative, because let's go back to the cornfield real quick. Did you, uh, when I was talking to my buddy, I said, he goes, man, I didn't know we went through that much corn. You know, of all the corn grown in U.S., all the corn that's grown in, in, in the United States, 2%. It's only 2% that's actually consumed by humans, whether that be cans of corns, corn on the cob, high fructose corn syrup, which is like in everything that's bad for you, 2%. Then why do we grow so much? 
because we're stupid. One, we're stupid or somebody's making money on it. And that's, a, that's the only two, two reasons why you'd be stupid. Because of this right here. What is that? It's a feedlot. We're going to go grow a whole bunch of corn and a whole bunch of soybeans that we don't even eat. That we don't even eat. That's not consumed by us. And we're going to feed it to an animal, cows, pigs. Well, we'll start with cows. With cows that aren't even supposed to be eating that stuff anyways. Why? Because, oh, it, it, it grows them fatter, faster, bigger, and cheaper. That That's pretty much a lie, too. Oh, if we, here, here's one of the things that I've heard a lot. Oh, if we if we feed them uh, if we don't feed them corn, then there's not going to be enough uh, feed to to feed all the cattle. That's also a lie. Why? Let's go back here for a second. Oh, there it is, right here. Let's go here. Okay. Do you know how many when when the first settlers, when the first European settlers came over here to? Uh, to the United States. Do you know what the North American bison herd was? The number. They, they didn't go and count one, two, three, four, five. No, 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 no. They did it. They, they can, they can do a, like an estimate off of fossils and whatnot. 80 to a hundred million bison roamed the plains all through Appalachia, all through the South migrated from Canada to Mexico every year. Um, that's what lived here. 80 to 100 million, probably more closer to the 100 million side. Now, let me ask you this. What is what is the current cattle herd of North America? Basically the same animal. Bison maybe be a little bit bigger, um, probably eat a little bit more. What is the, what is the, the number of cattle herd? Uh, what is North America's cattle herd right now? It ranges, it fluctuates, but anywhere from 80 to 100 million. Funny enough that the, the answer is the same. It's funny enough that it's exactly, exactly the same. So th this, this notion of, oh, we have to feed them corn or else they're going to run out of food. No, why? Because if you took this right here to where corn, I'm not an expert on it. I'm never going to be an expert on it. But corn's measured in bushels, okay? It's like, oh, if uh, this 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 land right here is 200 bushel of, uh, th this land right here is a uh, 200 bushel of an acre corn, okay? So this the, the, this acre right here can grow up 200 bushels of corn a year, okay? If that land is that fertile, then that same that same land can can produce i think it's 300 to 400 cow days per acre what's a cow day it's the number of uh it's either the number of cows that can be on a specific acre for one day or if you have one cow on one acre it can be there for three 300 to 400 days you understand what i mean there so it, it produces you can produce more food by running grass through a cow than you can by per acre than you can by growing corn and guess what you don't need to fertilize why the cows are doing that on your on on your own now do we have weeds and stuff that we have to you know try and push back because the soils are becoming so poor yeah but the same thing is going on with the the corn why do you think it has to be sprayed they, they, you have to have uh you know roundup resistant corn because you, the the or you have to spray herbicides and, and insecticides on all this stuff. Like, come on now. If we just did things the right way, moving the cows, you know, you don't even have to move cows every day. You have to move them every four or five. If you, if you can do, you know, move them every 20, at least every 21, you're actually doing, you know, a lot better. Um, it really helps the soils, really helps regenerate and helps the cows too because they get to eat more and it keeps the worms off of them. So you don't really have to warm them at all or if as much. But this right here, this right here, that's not, the, the cornfield, that's not natural. We're going to take that, take it away from this right here, and then switch it over and, and feed that to this. 
when it's completely unnecessary. It's completely unnecessary. That's what this is why it's so important to go grass fed. You know, you can go, you know, you know, there's a lot of people out there. Oh, just just eat whatever you can get your hands on that's meat based. Come on, you, you can do better. You should do better. You should be aiming to do better. Now, is everything that I eat grass fed? No, because sometimes I don't make it to the farmer's market and my steers are just being ready to get processed. Now, we still have a few available. Go to against the grain dot farm if you're within the within four and say four or five hours of East Texas. Um, we, we, also, we still have some of those available. But for the most part, hey, if you can go grass fed, it's so much healthier for you. The the vitamin, uh, what's it? The vitamin E, the the well, the omega six, the omega three um, ratio is balanced. Um, and then there's a lot of vi- big time thing in vitamin E. I got to go look up the charts again. I don't know it right off the top of my head. But this right here, unnecessary. This right here, unnecessary. This right here, that's what we need. That's exactly what we need. We need a lot more of that. We need we we need um, more people to be buying as local as they can because, you know the the um the feedlot. You look at the feedlot; it's all mud and dirt and poop, right? That's not good for the environment. You can smell it from a mile miles away. Um, but the cornfields, how do you how do you have to? Okay, let's let's see. How do you turn that right there? that right there where the cows are grazing into uh, a cornfield. What do you have to do? You have to one first cut down all the trees. Okay. That's not a good thing. Two, you have to go and plow up all the dirt and remove all the, remove all the grasses because the grass is going to get in the way of the corn. When, uh, what, every time that you plow, every time that you plant, guess what? It's going to, it's like taking a, um, a potato peeler to your skin and you're taking off part of your skin every with every pass you're taking a part uh, part of the soil every time that you're going by it, it, it it's it's removing soil from it's removing our soils from our land and the soils are one of the most important things that we have in our country look at look at look, look at countries that have uh, terrible soil okay think middle east you think any of them are doing real well? Real well? Do we want to end up like that? No. Uh oh. We're having a little bit of a, a a technical thing. This is the country for you. So, a um, little bit uh, technical delay. Let's see if we can get this back. Okay, it's coming. We're coming back. And that's part of living out in the country. Is uh, you get. Let's see. Uh oh. Let's see. Hang on. Am I back yet? add to there we go i'm back now okay um the th- think about middle east where they have terrible soils are they doing well no the most important thing is our our soils because you want you want to cause a problem make people hungry <laughs> you know we have to take care of it i think thomas jefferson um i think the he he's he's got a quote out there saying that the most important thing to our our nation is our soils and he's very 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 true and every time that a farmer goes and plows, guess what? It's loosening up that soil. It's loosening up that soil. It's taking another layer of your skin off. And guess what? Pretty soon there's no skin left. And a big thing is soil erosion because during the the, the winter, I mean, even if you plant cover crops, all right, which means that they go plant like clover and stuff to try and hold the soils together. It, it's going to erode from rain, from flooding. The, 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 it's taking away organic matter from the soils and every time that you go down um, a percentage in organic matter, every time that you go down a percentage in organic matter, you lose the ability to hold, it's either 22 or 24,000 gallons per acre that that saturate the soil and it'll just run off. And the more runoff it creates, it's like a snowball effect to where it takes more soil away, it takes more soil away. It's funny, I was driving through uh, Arkansas not too terribly long ago and you see the, you know, like the electrical line pillars, right? The, it's they, they they put the poles, the really, really big poles in cement. And it's crazy to see the, the, the erosion going on there because you'll see that or all around that area where that, that pillar is, there's like three feet of soil missing. Where did that go? Where did it go? Well, over in this area, where do you think everything funnels to? 
Okay, every river leads to the Mississippi. Every creek somehow gets gets there from from say the Rocky Mountains to the East Coast. Somehow it gets to the Mississippi River. Okay, where does the Mississippi River lead? Mississippi River leads to the Gulf of Mexico. What are we having a problem with uh, right now? You know, even more so than in the past. Stronger and stronger hurricanes. Okay, let me put this all together. I don't have no scientific fact to, to prove this, but this is my theory, and I think it's a pretty good one. All that soil gets funneled in the Mississippi because if you look at the Mississippi, it's all brown. All that soil is going, washing in the Gulf of Mexico. This is happening. When, when you take six feet, an average of six feet of soil that's been removed from our land and you put it into the Gulf of Mexico, guess what? That, that the, the bottom of the Gulf is probably getting shallower, 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 right? Um, and what happens when you heat, you start to heat up shallow water, what heats up faster, the, a uh, a uh, 10 foot, um, pool, the, uh, what, what heats up faster, the 10 foot side of the pool or the two foot side of the pool, the two foot side of the pool, guess what? We're creating an environment to where it's, yeah, the, the, are the hurricanes getting stronger? Sure. Probably debatable. I mean, I think they are, um, a lot of people that live down that way think they are. Why? Because we're creating an environment where, where it's a breeding ground for stronger and stronger storms. My take on it. Don't know if it's true. Think it is. It makes sense to me. Um, I don't think that there's ever been a study about, you know, looking into something like that. It'd be very interesting to see. But powers at, at bay, you know, the, it, it's funny because you look at both sides of the aisle. It, it, they, they, uh, they benefit big time off of off of uh, monocrops because look who owns the majority of the farmland in the United States. Oh, Bill Gates. What is he, what is he pushing? Um, you know, beyond meat, vegan stuff, not eating meat. Okay. So what does it, what does that mean that he makes money off of the corn and soybeans? Okay. You look at the other side, you look at the other side, the, the, um, the right side, who, who is their, their, their base, the, the farmers, the, the people that work the land, right? That, that grow a lot of these corn and soybeans, you know, oh, it's ethanol in, in Ohio and all this stuff. You know how many subsidies they get? It, it, it's such a, it's, you know, oh, we, we, we preach capitalism on, on one side, but, you know, we're going to give the farmers all these subsidies so they keep voting for us. Like, it just, it, it, it makes me mad. It, 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 it frustrates me. And it's just, it's not good all around. Eat differently. You know, you want to make a change, vote differently with your dollar, vote differently with your stomach, and vote differently with your health, too. Because I think if everybody switched to eating eating carnivore, one, the planet would be better. Two, everybody would be healthy. And three, we wouldn't have to worry about the healthcare system as much. That's, yeah. <laughs>